So let's walk through policy loans and how they work. When it comes to high cash value life insurance policies, loans are a beautiful feature to access your money while you continue to receive dividends on any money that's in cash value and what you have loaned against the policy. Meaning if I have hundred grand in cash value and I elect to loan half of it out, my money continues to compound the full $100,000 that is. So in this video, we are going to begin with looking at some simple examples, but then we're going to take it a step further and look at actual returns, the internal rate of return on cash value, the net cost to borrow, and really break down how loans work and answer a lot of questions that often come up among real estate investors, business, business owners, and people that really wanna know what's the net growth rate and the net cost to borrow. But let's start out with a simplified example. So when we look at policy loans, let's assume that you have a high cash value life insurance policy with $100,000 in cash value and your net internal rate of return, which is your net growth rate, not the dividend rate, the net earnings rate is 4%. We'll also assume that you have a death benefit on your policy of a clean $1 million. So if you don't do anything, that's what you've got in cash value. The next year, that will appreciate to 104. So we will now assume that you take a $50,000 policy loan. When we take that $50,000 loan, there is a cost to borrow. On average, you'll see loan rates fall between four and 5%. If you have an older policy, that was purchased before 2022, on average, you'll see rates fall between five and 6%. It is possible to find rates lower than 4%. Some products have them that range between three and three and a half percent. All companies have different rates and such. But for this example, 4% cost to borrow. So when you take that $50,000 loan, you will have a 4% interest rate that goes to the insurance company. Now you have the option to pay the loan interest out of pocket. In this case, that'd be $2,000 that you pay to the insurance company. If you elect not to pay the loan interest, what will happen is that the policy will take a loan against itself, specifically from the cash value. So you would see your cash value grow by $2,000 less than it normally would because $2,000 will be pulled from your cash value to cover that loan interest. So my point is it's optional to pay loans back. But in this example, we're going to assume we repay it. 4% cost to borrow that goes to the insurance company. We do not pay the interest back to ourselves. Now, when you take that $50,000 loan, what you will notice is that the death benefit will drop dollar for dollar. So it was $1 million. It is now $950,000, which leaves me with $50,000 in remaining cash value, or we could also refer to this as remaining equity. I like that term remaining equity because we can relate, relate it to real estate. Think of it this way. If you have a piece of property that's appreciating every single year, let's call it at 4%. If you take a loan against that property, will you continue to earn that 4% on the entire property value or only the remaining equity? on the entire property value. That's a beautiful feature to real estate. With life insurance, it's almost the exact same thing. So what happens in this particular case, if we didn't touch the money, we would continue to earn that 4% on the full $100,000. Because we took a loan here, what'll happen is we continue to earn that 4% internal rate of return on the full $100,000. The way we can think of it is on the remaining equity, and on the outstanding loan. So there's no lost opportunity cost. We will see the same $4,000 in net growth rate or net, gro net cash value growth, whether we touch it or not. If your policy is non-direct or direct recognition will have an impact there, we're gonna look at an example briefly at the end of this video on that, but you will find with policy loans, you still receive dividends on everything. How that's possible, is one, we do have a cost to borrow. So the insurance company does make money off of loans. And then in addition to that, the death benefit is collateralized. So let's look at a simple example first without internal rates of return here. On the left, we've got an example where we are just going to pay money into the policy and let it sit and grow. I would always encourage you whenever looking at a loan scenario is look at the growth scenario first. This allows you to see exactly what the policy looks like. If you pump money into it, let it sit and grow. 
and then you can directly compare it with a loan scenario so you can see what your net cost to borrow is. Very, very valuable. It also allows you to look at the growth scenario and determine if the policy is designed properly for maximum cash value. So as we look at this guy, age 40 male, 50K per year for five years going in. Policy is properly designed. We can tell based off the first year cash value, very cash rich. Also break even point, year five, I've paid in 250, I've got 253 in cash value. Now we set a level death benefit here, level initially, you will see that this death benefit eventually does increase, but we deliberately did this. I just set it at $1.1 million so we can demonstrate exactly how the loans work. So before we progress onto the loan section, keep in mind this column right here, annual dividend. We're gonna look at this column when we compare the loan scenario. Before I go one step further, something very important here. This company, this is based, off on, based on a mass mutual illustration. Mass mutual's dividend interest rate right now is 6%, which would make me think the dividend column equates to a 6% rate. Not the case. For example, if I look at year six, six to seven, I pay in nothing. It grows from 264 to 275. That's not 6%. But the main point I wanna hit on here is this dividend column, it's about $5,700, but what's your cash value growth? About $11,000. So this dividend column here does not represent the full growth rate or the full cash value growth. Just wanna point that out, that's a question that comes up sometimes. The reason why is because the guaranteed, the guaranteed piece is not included in there. So, progressing on to how loans work. As we look at this, exact same policy funded for five years. By the fifth year, you've got 253 in cash value, death benefits $1.1 million. We elect to take a policy loan, $200,000. What is the impact of that policy loan? Well, if this is your policy, when you take that $200,000 loan, the gauge that determines how much you can loan is always what you have in cash value. So if we look at the growth example at year six, it was 264. We take that loan, $200,000, we see $56,000 in cash value. That's about a reduction, a reduction of about $208,000. Where that extra $8,000 is coming from in this example is the loan interest. We actually made no payments in year six. And this does demonstrate the fact that we don't have to make loan repayments. A lot of people are attracted to that. Often when someone takes a loan, if they do have an intent to repay it, they really like the idea sometimes, it depends on the individual, but they often like the idea of saying, hey, if I don't have to make payments for 12 months, that'll be great. That allows my cash flow to really start rolling from the piece of property I plow this $200,000 into. It buys me some time, they look at it that way, and then I'll start repaying it the next year. But here, where that additional $8,000 comes from is, from is due to the fact that I'm not paying it back. Now, what do we see on the far right? Death benefits $900,000. What was the loan amount you took? $200,000. What was your death benefit before you took a policy loan? $1.1 million. How much did the death benefit drop by? Exactly $200,000. So our death benefit is collateralized dollar for dollar by the amount we take a policy loan. There's a cost to borrow as well. In this case, 4% is the loan interest rate. 4% of $200,000 comes out to 8%. So the company charges interest, collateralizes the death benefit. What we get in return is when we look at the dividend column and the guaranteed rate, there's not a guaranteed rate column on this, but that's applied to any money still in remaining equity, remaining cash value, and on the outstanding loan balance. How you can see that is when we begin to repay it, next year, we apply $30,000 toward a loan repayment, of which $8,000 goes toward the interest, and the other $22,000 is applied toward the principal. That's why I'm at 178 on my principal balance. I did not see a clean $30,000 reduction because of my $30,000 payment, portion went toward the $8,000 interest expense. 
continue to make $30,000 payments each year, pay it off in full. What do you notice here? But over here, this is year 14. Let's just draw a straight line all the way over. What's your cash value? 366 and change. What's your death benefit? $1.1 million. What's it on the example when you never touch it? Just let it sit and grow. 366, 1.1 million. No lost opportunity cost. Remember that dividend column? Let's go back to that. What do you notice year six through 14? Are there any change on the numbers? Identical. I continue to receive whatever the dividend payout is year in and year out. Same is true of the guaranteed rate that's applied to the policy that's applied on the full cash value balance. So there's no lost opportunity cost, and if and when it is repaid, I see everything fully restored. As time passes, you will notice that this death benefit eventually begins to appreciate as well. It'll appreciate faster if he continues to pump money into it. We only showed a five-year funding scenario in this example, or if we reduce the death benefit. We can improve the cash value performance in this guy, which is a lot of fun. Now, a question that comes up sometimes here is, okay, this is great conceptually, Steve. However, what am I actually earning on the policy compared to what I'm paying? I know that the loan interest rate here is 4%. Can you break it down a little bit further? What's the cost to borrow compared to the net internal rate of return? Because I have a dividend rate of 6%, but I'm not earning 6%. So let's take a look here. There's my cost to borrow, 4% loan interest rate. So that 4%, we can see it here. If we just calculate whatever that loan balance is by 4%, that's where the interest comes from each year. Annualized internal rate of return. We wanna look at the annual and the average. In this example, we'll just look at the annual because for the average, I've gotta pull it from the company software, convert a PDF to Excel, which we're gonna look at in the next two examples, but this one, just the annual, <laughs> I can do it much faster. <laughs> so here we go. Same exact thing. All we added was the IRR reports. First and second year, negative. Less money than what I pay in year over year. Now, gets better and better each year. You'll notice after the funding, I'm not making any premium payments, or PUA payments for that matter, so I don't have any premium or PUA fees or loads associated with the policy because I'm not paying it, so you will see a nice little jump on the IRR when I look at that, which is pretty cool. But this helps me see what am I earning on the policy each year? And what am I paying in loan interest each year? We can do this if we look at loans upfront. So if I take a loan in year two, it's gonna hurt me more than it's gonna help me in that particular year, because I've got a negative IRR versus a cost to borrow of 4%. If I look at it in year six in this example, IRR, 4.16%. Interest rate, 4%. Okay, I see a positive spread there. As time passes, this is the annualized IRR. Look at this. Comes down for a little bit and starts to shoot back up. The reason why we've got a one-year term rider associated with this product that we didn't remove, we just kept it at $1.1 million for simplicity. The IRR does pick up though. And we see that we will outpace the 4% cost to borrow based on the current dividend interest rate and such. Now, let's continue on here. And let's look at another example. So this is a great example to start with to demonstrate the death benefit reduction because it's a $1.1 million death benefit. Let's progress on here. Let's look at a high cash value policy. So we're gonna look at a different product here. This is a 10 pay policy. And we're going to look at the annual internal rate of return and also the average internal rate of return. The loan rate with this product, as of the day of shooting this video, is actually three and a quarter percent. What we did for this example was bump it up a bit because we can increase variable rates for illustrative purposes. So we increased it to four percent. To make it higher, we're going to close this video out with a six percent loan rate, but let's focus on this one first. So annual IRR, what I'm earning each year. Average IRR, what did it average out over time? So what do we see here? 100K per year going in. 
for 10 years in this example. You'll notice a different pattern with the death benefit. You'll also notice a death benefit drop after the 10 year funding scenario. We optimized this guy for cash value. Pure minimum death benefit, maximum cash value. The last example we looked at was not optimized to the same degree because we had that $1.1 million death benefit. Break even, year four. Annual IRR, negative in the first two years. Then gets better and better. Tops out really at 5%, at 4.99 for several years. Assuming the current dividend interest rate holds, things will change over time. That's where we like to track the performance of these. And then you've got the average internal rate of return. Personally, I like to look at the annualized IRR um, when measuring the cost to borrow. It's just a personal preference because I like to see what am I earning this particular year and what am I paying in interest this particular year. However, there is value in looking at the average IRR. Some people I speak with prefer to look solely at that, and it is a, a matter of preference. I prefer the annual, some prefer the average. Let's look at both. This way we can just have full transparency. We don't want to try and convince someone, well, this is the way or the best way to look at it. No, have full transparency. This way I can make a decision that I'm personally comfortable with. When I say I'm personally comfortable with, I mean if I'm you, if you and I flip positions. So there's my average IRR, and you will see that increase over time but it is very beneficial to compare them side by side. Because now we've got the same 4% cost to borrow. This is a different loan scenario, half a million dollars coming out. You'll notice an identical pattern here. A little bit different because we don't have a level death benefit, but it doesn't really matter here. There we go, 500K loan. There's the equity that determines how much you can loan. Same thing over here, year six, death benefit, death benefit drop. Now, similar payback schedule, eh, not really similar, a little bit different than the last example. In this particular case, you see a 4% cost to borrow, and you see beginning year seven, there's the interest, 4% of 500 grand is $20,000. We're going to assume, here we've got loan repay, it's actually the interest payment of $20,000. While he was funding it at 100K per year, he didn't want to make a loan principal payment. He said, hey, I'm still dedicating money here. I'm good covering the interest, but not the principal on top of it. So, made interest only payments, and then after he's done funding it, zero premium or PUA payments, but now continues to pay the interest and also applies $100,000 per year toward the principal. So really what we want to look at here, or what I like to point out, is in year 11, your net payment out of pocket is $120,000. You paid $100,000 toward the principal plus another $20,000 toward interest. You can do it however you'd like. Um, this can fluctuate each year, but we made this simple in this example. As simple as we could with all these charts. So what do you notice here? When the loan is repaid, it's year 15, age 55, cash value, 1507, death benefit, 255. Cash value, 1507, death benefit, 255. Balance is fully restored to what it would have been as if we never touched it in the first place. Now, one other thing that's valuable to look at before we look at the next example, is what's my total interest cost? Because well, that can actually impact the break even as well. So check this out. Let's just tally up interest payments. Not principal payments, just pure interest. I like to know whenever I'm looking at any type of loan, with any type of product, What's the total dollar amount, not necessarily the rate of return, though it always adds up in one, way, in one way or another, but what's the total dollar amount I'm paying to an institution? Some people prefer this over the rate that is. So here we go, $140,000. So as far as total 
payments or deposits I made toward to the insurance company, could look at it this way, I paid in a million dollars toward premium and PUA payments, plus another $140,000 in interest payments. Again, valuable to look at here. There's my total cost as time passes. Could I get a lower, low, lower loan interest rate? Yes, we could look at a cash value collateral loan. We've got other videos on that. Let's wrap this video up by looking at a 6% cost to borrow. I actually gotta make a quick tweak here. So, same policy, everything's identical in this case. 100K for 10 years. No need to go through the growth, same thing with the annual IRR and average IRR. The difference is this, $500,000 loan, but it's 6%. This is actually at a fixed loan interest rate, meaning it will never increase. A lot of people, especially of late, have been attracted to a fixed loan interest rate to say, hey, can I lock in the fixed rate? And if I wanna go variable, if I want a lower, lower, lower loan interest rate than 6%, I'll consider a cash value collateral loan because I can find those around 3% right now. And then if interest rates go up, that collateral loan is higher than I'm comfortable with, well then I'll flip it back to my policy and go with a 6% 6 fixed rate. But in any event, here we go. These are all pulled directly from the illustration. Same funding pattern that we looked at last time. Same reduction. When I take that policy loan, cash value, death benefit, pay interest only, then principal and interest. Here's where you'll see things a little bit different. This will be interesting. Year 15, when I let it sit and grow, you're at 1507. Here, you're at 1557. $50,000 more. Death benefits higher too. Had that happen? Because we didn't pay anything extra into the policy. How that happened is that this policy is a direct recognition policy. And all that means is that the company is going to apply a different dividend interest rate to borrowed funds than it does to non-borrowed funds. But we're at right now in a low interest rate environment with a high fixed loan rate, the company actually raises the dividend rate on borrowed funds. A number of years ago, they lowered the dividend rate in borrowed funds, the same company. So this is Mass Mutual, by the way. Same is true of other carriers. Guardian, right, depending on when you purchased your policy and what your fixed loan interest rate is, you may experience a dividend bump when you borrow. If it's a newer product, you might receive a dividend reduction. Timing is important there. My point is direct recognition will impact how dividends are applied to your policy. Typically it doesn't make a huge difference, really, in my opinion, but it is important to build awareness because it might not make a difference to me just as I look at the different options, but it does to some people. So we want to be thorough and going through everything because it's people's money they're dealing with. If you've got a concern, we want to make sure we properly address it and treat you how we want to be treated when we have a concern. So I hope you enjoyed this one. A bit of a deep dive um, regarding policy loans. Here's a quick sample on cash value collateral loans to look at this. This is just leveraging a policy with a line of credit, which I would just search on our channel of collateral loans or cash value collateral. You'll see videos pop up that walk through exactly how these work. It's a nice way to get a lower lo loan interest rate. But same thing, just as we leverage the policy for a lower loan interest rate. In any event, I do hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, that does help us. Um, and as always, I hope this helps. Thank you so much. Hey guys, Steve Parisi here. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for future videos. If you'd like more information or to see some custom policies for yourself, feel free to call or email our offices at the contact information below.